All right, what is good, everybody? Quan Credible here, and this video is going to be a little bit different than a regular review. It's going to kind of more be along the lines of where Fortnite is about to go going into next year, 2023. As um, you may be aware, chapter 89 was the chapter that just came out, but this is going to be the last chapter we get for a little bit as we're going to go on like a break for like the, the New Year's, I believe. So I wanted to talk about where this chapter is leading us towards because honestly, Nakaba has set it up really, really well, um, I guess for, I guess, laying down what we can expect for 2023, which is going to be a great, great year. So as for the very beginning of the chapter, like, as I said, this isn't going to be a review, but I, I just have to let, like preface it a little bit. So at the beginning of the uh, chapter, it is basically, you know, Meliodas assigning the four knights and their respective groups as to where they're going to be going um to you know search for an entrance into camelot or search for a way to get to there because as we already know you need like some type of special seal or something and you also have to be part human which everybody so far already meets those requirements they just need a way to get actually in there and i find it very very interesting because when we look at what uh, meliodas had set up he set up team percival and gawain to search the fair king's forest in northern britannia and team tristan is going to search old camelot in southern britannia and then lancelot by himself is going to search benwick in eastern britannia and at first glance those things really don't mean a lot like obviously the first one that, that, that stands out is Percival and Gawain you know being a combination together that's you know immediately sticks out but those two going up to the Fair King's Forest in Northern Britannia as we know the Fair King Forest is at the very very tippy top of where Britannia is supposed to be and this is also where King and Diane are so this will be you know, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's not just going to be a straight shot. They just get there really fast and don't, you know, run into anything in the uh, in the meantime. But I, I, we definitely can look forward to whatever the interaction is going to be between, you know, Percival and Gawain and uh, King and Diane. Now, I know a lot of people were looking forward to potentially some type of mini training session between those two. Or like maybe King can teach, you know, Percival something or, you know, that he might learn how to use his abilities better. I definitely think that, I definitely don't think we're going to get a full on, full blast training art from Percival if he gets to the Fairy King Forest. Same thing for Gawain. But I do think it's going to be, you know, some, like, I do think that they're going to have something to maybe make him a little bit stronger. Because the way King uses his ability, you know, changing his, like, chast his uh, chast to pull around is very reminiscent or i guess percival's way of you know manipulating his magic is reminiscent of king and his chastable so maybe king might be able to give percival a little bit of insight on how to use his powers a little bit more effectively at any rate those being the next two sins that we're going to see in the series more than likely is going to be really really hype and i have a lot of reason to believe that in the beginning of 2023 um, you know, as this journey starts, we're going to follow Percival first. Like, I don't think he's going to lead off with Tristan or Lancelot. I think the first group we're going to follow in this is going to be Percival and Gawain's group. So I am really excited and hyped for that in the beginning of 2023. As for the next group that gets brought up, the one that, that was mentioned second, would be Team Tristan. So Tristan and the Tristan pl uh, platoon are going to be searching the remains of old Camelot. Now, this is really exciting for a lot of different reasons. Uh, Camelot is really, really far away from where Leonis is. It's like on the complete other side of Britannia. It's at the very, very bottom. Like it's mad far. So there's going to be a lot of space in between these guys. And arguably they have to travel the farthest in my opinion. I believe they're actually going the farthest away. But this is really interesting because uh, the demons were holed up in old Camelot for quite some time. Um, you know, with Zeldris, you know, making that more or less his base of operations after he left Edinburgh. And this is also, you know, where the original demon was and where, you know, a huge fight happened between, you know, the original demon, the demon king and the seven deadly since all that happened right where old Camelot was. So like right in that general area. So there could be some connection to the demon room down there with Tristan's group going down that way. So there is that, you know, slight bit of like you know maybe tristan might meet zeldris or maybe there will be some connection to zeldris because at the moment tristan does not seem very interested in his dad <laughs> like we see that at the beginning of chapter 89 when you know his dad's trying to you know bid him his farewell but he doesn't really care he's all about you know talking to his mom so if there was going to be a connection to tristan and his demon side it wouldn't be from Eliotis. the only other person that makes sense would be zeldris and Honestly, Tristan does, when he's not using his goddess powers, he does seem to be more of like a traditional swordsman, more of a swordsman than I would say Meliodas is, and Zeldris, you know, being taught by a Kusak, being more of a swordsman himself, they could have that connection there, and it would be kind of like Zeldris playing this cool uncle role for Tristan to teach him more about his abilities. 
which is, you know, one of the first things I think about with, you know, that group going down to Camelot. Another thing with them going down there, it's kind of more of a side um, part that wouldn't uh, that a lot of people wouldn't think about. But I believe the Druid Forest of uh, Istar is down that way, too, because I know it's not a one for one, but, you know, Britannia is based off of Great Britain, like or based off of the United Kingdom. And Ishtar is based off of at least the Druid Forest of Ishtar in Seven Daily Sins is based off of Stonehenge. Uh, if you look at the entrance of it, it's very reminiscent of Stonehenge. As you can see right here, this is pretty much like it's basically the exact same thing. And, you know, Stonehenge is all the way at the bottom of the United Kingdom, not terribly far from where Camelot would have actually been. So, if you know, reason to believe that they could potentially stumble upon uh, the Druid Forest because when Melios is talking about people that can help them along their journey, we do see a flash of Zanari and of Jenna, which as we know, they did have a small part in the Seven Deadly Sins training in that forest. Also helped with Gil Thunder and Hauser to get a little bit stronger as well as Arthur. I want to say that's where he met Kath. But this is all really interesting because Chion being Gil Thunder's son could have a, a training moment uh, down here in the Druid Forest. Maybe Tristan could learn more about his goddess abilities or maybe he could learn more about how to heal uh, to a higher degree because as we know he can't heal like curses and sicknesses like his mom can but uh, You know if you learn something from the druids They could potentially take his healing to the next level So it's kind of interesting that if they go south of Britain There is ties for Tristan if they want to go a more goddess druid route or if they want to go a more um, If they want to go a more demon route, there's definitely those two things there for uh, Tristan There's not a lot there for Jade or for uh, Isolde but like I said, for Chion, he does have some small connections to Ishtar with his dad. So there is that. So this is definitely set up really, really, really well for Tristan down there. So if we do get to the Tristan stuff next year, I think it'll be more so towards the end. I don't think um, like I don't think we're going to lead off with this. Like I said before, I think we're going to lead off with, with the personal stuff. Nakaba could do the thing where he intermittently switches out between the three. But I think it'll, I think he's going to go with mostly Percival and then a switch to, to Tristan, then mostly Tristan, and then a switch to Lancelot, and then maybe like go back and forth from there. But I think we're going to get heavily established in all of them first before he starts bouncing around. Uh, but for the last one is Lancelot, and I definitely think his story is going to be tackled last out of the uh, three. Like I think I don't think we're just going to go immediately there first. Obviously, I could be wrong, but that's just you know what I think right now. And him going alone was very interesting granted i didn't think that gawain was going to necessarily necessarily pair with him because that'd be kind of an awkward pairing like out of all the four of them i think that's the weirdest pairing is gawain and lancelot because i mean gawain and percival have that comedy bit that they can kind of do you know gawain and tristan get along really well tristan and lancelot you know childhood friends lancelot and percival already have hung out together but the whole gawain and Lancelot pairing would, would be weird. So I get it why Nakaba didn't send those two together. I know some people thought that maybe Theodis would kind of join Lancelot's group, but Theodis is the court wizard, the court mage. So she kind of does have to stay where she is. It is kind of her job. So Lancelot going solo to Benwick. Uh, Benwick being where Elaine and Bon are, as we heard. That is where his parents are. That's where his dad is the king of Benwick. Um, it's kind of interesting because Lancelot didn't really want to go back because he hasn't completed what his goal is to himself, which is to find Jericho and bring her back. But as Melios was saying, you kind of halfway did it. You found her. You just didn't bring her back. So you should check in. So, you know, Lancelot has legit not checked in on his parents at all. So it'll be very interesting to see, like, you know, what all is going on with there. I also suspect that with the Lancelot journey, this is where we're, this is where we're going to get more um, probably the full flashback on what was going on with the Lady of the Lake and all of that kind of stuff, as well as the Lancelot has a lot to do with the Guinevere uh, subclass. You know, she got kidnapped by Ironside. So we'll kind of see he might run into her or him along the way in some way, shape, or form. Um, they don't get, like, in the middle, kind of more, like, it is Eastern Britain, but it's more in the middle. So he's actually not really going terribly far from where um, from where Leonis is. So he's going to have a lot more flexibility in terms of what he's going to be able to do and be a part of. He did also say he was going to search for dubs to kind of get his own weapon 
which you know is important because he is unable to wield any weapon because his magical power is just way too strong he's just too op i imagine this is probably an issue with the uh with the original seven deadly sins which is why they needed their own you know weapon to kind of use but it's kind of interesting because i I'd never really heard of where dubs would be at so i wonder how exactly he's going to stumble uh upon him i do think that I do think that Nakaba is going to get uh, need to give Lancelot a companion to travel with. So I'm kind of wondering how he's going to manage that. Because uh, a character traveling alone, like strictly solo, and then it being a character like Lancelot who already doesn't have, you know, the most entertaining personality as a solo act. Like he doesn't really have any zany thoughts or he doesn't really act weird or anything. So he's more mellow. So he's not going to do anything crazy alone. So you kind of need to give him... You kind of need to give this character like a companion to kind of spice it up a little bit. So I'm assuming the cop is going to introduce a new character entirely for Lancelot to, to travel with. I don't think it's going to be anything weird like he randomly saves Guinevere and then their traveling companions. I don't think it's going to be anything like that. Um, I was talking to somebody with it in my uh, DMs there uh, asking do I think Lancelot might run into those fairies or that giant that was in the movie. It's possible. It's definitely possible. Granted, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's probably just going to be a new character entirely. I mean, Nik Nikaba does like to reuse characters, so I wouldn't see an issue with it if he did. But I just kind of feel like he's just going to make a new character entirely for him uh, to travel with. So I don't think we're going to really get to that um, next year. If we do, I think it'll be towards the end of next year because there's a lot of stuff to cover. Like, there's a lot of content to kind of pack into all three of these journeys. Uh, so this is definitely where the story is going to, like, expand out. But like I said, that's just my, like, I guess, prediction on what's going to happen with that. So we're definitely going to have to wait and see. All in all, I am really excited for what Fortnite is going to be doing next year. Obviously, like, once the break it ends after the new year and all that, I'm going to be right back picking up on the consistent re reviews. But I am curious to know what you guys think is going to happen out of these journeys. Like, do you think they're going to run into a bit of things differently than I said? Like, do you think, uh, say, like, Percival is going to have a different training? Or do you think that maybe, say uh Lancelot might run into like Matrona or something like like how do you think it's all going to balance out um with who they might run into on their respective journeys I just want to know you guys opinions on all that um that being said Four Nights is looking very well looking very very good for 2023 that's the second part of the movie I believe Seven Deadly Sins Origin is supposed to be coming out next year so it's looking up pretty well still haven't got an exact day on the anime but we have a lot of things to look forward to so with that being said make sure you guys like the videos well subscribe to the channel for more content coming to you in 2023 about Fortnites. Uh, you guys all enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you all in my next video.